The NDP announced their budget yesterday and it's poised to plunge Alberta into the kind of debt and deficit my hardworking grandkids not yet born will have to work to pay off. The budget is called the Alberta Jobs Plan, which is ironic given that the NDP just had to cancel a jobs creation strategy they announced in their last budget because they couldn't figure out how to get the darn thing off the ground. Here are a few points from the budget. The budget breaks the NDP's legal borrowing limit passed just five months ago with no new cap on borrowing at all. The NDP actually have to change their own law to be able to spend more. There's $6.5 billion in new government spending over three years. That's a 13% increase. There's $14 billion in consolidated deficit this year alone. There's $58 billion in total government debt by 2019, meaning that there will be $2 billion in annual interest payments on that, costing the average household $2,000. There's an almost $10 billion carbon tax with more than three quarters of it going to new government spending, meaning they're going to spend the carbon tax money on pet green energy projects as quickly as you and I can pay it. This carbon tax hits the typical Alberta family earning more than $50,000 with at least a $1,000 hike in taxes and costs. The NDP aren't even predicting to bring the budget back into balance until 2024. Now it's a good thing they'll be gone by 2019 though, now, I was there at the legislature, much to the chagrin of the NDP, I imagine, to get some post-budget reaction from a few people who are looking out for you, the taxpayer. I spoke to Paige McPherson from the Canadian Taxpayers Federation, and she gave me her thoughts on the budget here. What we're seeing is that the government deficit is around $14 billion. That's going to increase the province's debt and it's going to shovel that debt burden squarely onto the backs of future generations. So that's a big concern. Um, we saw that there was a 1% decrease to the small business tax, but it was sort of presented as though it was an offsetting measure to the carbon tax. And we need to remember that a $3 billion carbon tax is coming down the pipe. We now have details that confirm that a lot of that carbon tax revenue is going to be spent on corporate welfare. The majority of that revenue, that's where that's going to go. So that's, uh, that's very disappointing to see. The other thing that we can note is debt servicing costs. That's literally just the debt interest payments, basically paying the minimum payment on the taxpayer credit card, are going to be $996 million this year, going up to $2 billion in 2018-19. Just to put that in perspective, that's about the salary or compensation of 20,000 teachers in the province that we could be hiring, but instead we're throwing that money into basically a pit where it's not going to have any value for taxpayers at all. It's literally just making that minimum payment on the taxpayer credit card. I spoke to Amber Ruddy with the Canadian Federation of Independent Business, who found a glimmer of hope in the budget for small businesses. Here. So it's refreshing to see an emphasis on small business. We haven't seen that approach taken by a lot of other governments, so that's a positive. Uh, but now we're looking at the introduction of a carbon tax and how that's going to impact businesses. You know, 82% of our members are telling us now is not the time to introduce a carbon tax. And um, on one hand, they talk about recycling the revenues from the carbon tax and as a job creation measure. So I think there's a bit of a conflict there between what the intent and purpose of that uh, you know, reduction in small business taxes is going to be. Now this is where the rubber of the reality meets the road of Venezuelan style socialism. The NDP campaigned on corporations and businesses being greedy, that businesses could afford to pay more in taxes, even in this economic downturn. The NDP were wrong, but they'll never admit it. I wonder how 2015 Rod Loyola reconciles this series of tweets condemning businesses with 2016 Rod Loyola. A Twitter user told him, Albertans won't have to worry about their jobs if you tax the bejesus out of corporations in a downturn. There won't be any. And Loyola, in true Sandinista form, calls it pure rhetoric and says, what is another two or three percent when they are making billions? They should pay their fair share. Well, I guess when you're wrong, when you're painting our small businesses, and job creators as greedy capitalist pigs at least do it with passion. Right, Rod? And lastly, I spoke to Derek Fildebrand. He's the Wild Rose Shadow Minister for Finance, and he had a lot to say about how the NDP budget will hurt our families. Here. Well, you know, if, I, if this had not been my first Alberta budget, I'd be very upset right now. But at this point, uh, you're, I'm almost starting to become a bit numb with bad Alberta budgets. Uh, over the last decade, we've seen the net wealth of this province decline by $65 billion. This latest NDP budget showed their commitment to increasing spending to the public sector when families can afford it the least. 
Many families in the private sector are taking pay cuts. They can't afford to pay more to a government who will spend it on their friends and pet projects. For the Rebel.media, I'm Sheila Gunn-Reed. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.